Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL Water tutorial and this week we're going to be implementing clipping planes. So clipping planes allow us to specify a 3D plane in the world and then all the geometry which is outside of that plane is simply not rendered. So as you can see here I've specified a horizontal plane at a certain height and everything to one side of that plane is rendered but everything to the other side is not. This is going to be very useful for us when we're rendering the refraction and reflection textures for our water. When we render the refraction texture, we only want to render geometry which is under the water's surface, because stuff that's above the water's surface isn't going to be refracted. And when we render the reflection texture, we're only going to want to render geometry which is above the water's surface, because geometry under the water would obviously not be reflected on the water's surface. It's important that we use clip planes for two reasons. Firstly, it will help a lot with performance because all of the clip geometry doesn't have to be processed by the fragment shader uh, and that will save us a lot of time, especially when rendering the refraction texture because everything above the water won't be processed. Also, if we don't use a clip plane when rendering the refraction texture, then we'd end up with this kind of problem here, where objects above the water are also refracted on the water's surface and that's obviously something that we don't want. To use clipping planes in OpenGL, we use an inbuilt variable in the vertex shader called glclipDistance. This variable is an array of floats where each element in the array corresponds to one clipping plane, because you can, if you want, use multiple clipping planes. We're only ever going to be using one clipping plane at a time though, so we'll always be using glclipDistance0. And the first thing that we need to do in our code before we can use this variable is to enable it. So in the main game loop, let's enable GL clip distance zero. And if you wanted to use other clip planes, you would have to enable them as well. So this GL clip distance variable allows us to tell OpenGL how far each vertex is from the clipping plane. OpenGL doesn't care about the clipping plane at all. It doesn't want to know which clipping plane it is. It doesn't care about where the clipping plane is. OpenGL just wants to know the signed distance of each vertex from that plane, whichever plane, wherever that plane may be. If this distance is positive, then it means that the vertex is on the inside of the plane, the, the correct side of the plane, and so won't get culled. If the distance is negative, then it means that the vertex is on the outside of the plane, on the culling side of the plane. So we give the distance for each vertex, and then OpenGL interpolates these distances over the whole geometry, and then any part of the geometry with a negative distance is culled and isn't rendered, and anything with a distance of 0 and over is rendered. So let's test that out here in the vertex shader, and all we're going to do is we're going to set the GL clip distance as minus 1 for every single vertex. This tells OpenGL that every single vertex is outside the clipping plane and should therefore be culled, and so if we run this now, you'll be able to see that none of the entities are being rendered because they're all being culled. Alternatively, we could set this GL clip distance to a positive number, and that would tell OpenGL that all of the vertices are inside the plane and so are not culled. But that's obviously not very useful to us. We need to actually have a plane that we can define, and then we'll need to calculate the distance of each vertex from that plane so that we can tell OpenGL. To do this, we first need to define a plane, and to define a plane, we need to know the equation of the plane. Now, I'm not going to explain plane equations here because this isn't a maths tutorial, and I'm not even sure if I understand them too well myself, but basically, this is a general plane equation, where A, B, C is the normal of the plane, and D is basically the distance of the plane from the origin. If you want to learn more about equations of planes, I've put some links in the description, uh, but it's not really necessary for you to understand them too well for this tutorial. We're just going to be using horizontal planes anyway, uh, which makes things very easy for us, because the normal of the plane is always going to be 0, 1, 0, pointing straight upwards, or 0, minus 1, 0, pointing straight downwards if we want everything above the plane to be culled, and then the distance d from the origin is just going to be the height of the plane. So to define a plane, we just need these a, b, c, d values, and we can store them in a 4D vector. So let's now define a plane here in the vertex shader, and we're going to create a horizontal plane which culls everything above a height of 15. And you might want to choose a different height, depending on the height of the entities in your world. So now that we have a plane, we need to find the distance of each vertex from that plane. To do that, we simply have to take the dot product of the position of the vertex in the world, 
and the 4D vector created using those values from the plane's equation. And this will return the distance of the vertex from the plane, which we will then tell OpenGL using the GL clip distance zero variable. So this should now work, and if I go ahead and run this, you can see that it has indeed culled everything above the height of 15. So now we're going to want to be able to specify the plane in the Java code, instead of having to hard code it into the shaders. So we now won't define the plane here, uh, but what we will do is we're going to make this a uniform variable, so that we can load up values to it from the Java code. So now we need to do the usual thing in the static shader that we do every time when we add a new uniform variable. So we need a new int to hold the location of that uniform variable. We then need to get the location of that uniform in the get all uniform locations method. And don't forget to spell plane correctly here. And now we need a method that can load up a 4D vector to that uniform variable. So this will be called load clip plane and it will take in a 4D vector. Um, we do actually have to go into the shader program class quickly to add a method here that can load up a 4D vector. So we'll copy the one that loads up a 3D vector and then just change that from vector 3F to vector 4F, uh, from GL uniform 3F to GL uniform 4F, and then add in that fourth vector component. So now let's go back and we can actually call that method. So let's call load vector, and uh, that's going to load up to location plane and it's going to load up the clip plane vector. So now we need to call this method and actually load up a 4D vector. So we're going to do this in the render method in the master renderer. So this is going to take in the clip plane and then just after we've started the shader we're going to load it up to the shader. So call shader.load clip plane. Then uh, the render scene method is also going to need to take in the clip plane so that it can give it to the render method there. And then in the main game loop we can now specify the clip plane values. So let's just use the same clip plane that we used before. The, the normal is 0, minus 1, 0 and then the distance, the height of the plane is 15. And we're going to use that um, for both of the render passes here. So let's now run this to check that it's all working still and as you can see the tops of the trees are still being cut off so that's good but what we can also do is we can actually specify different clip planes for each time that we render the scene. So for this second one here let's specify a different clip plane which will cull everything under a height of zero. Um, so in the top left here you can see that it's still using the old clip plane and cutting off the tops of the trees but in the second render pass it's now actually cutting off everything under a height of zero, so all of the rocks at the bottom are being culled. So this is all working as we would hope. However, as you can see, the clip plane is only culling entities because we only put the clip plane calculation in the entities vertex shader. So now you need to do exactly the same thing for the terrain vertex shader by adding in the plane uniform variable and doing the clip distance calculation here. And then you need to do all the same stuff in the terrain shader class as well with getting the location and having a method to load up the clip plane. Then you can load up the clip plane to the shader in the render method in the master renderer. And if we run that now, it should all be working nicely. So once you've got that working, what you need to do is to set up two GUI previews like I've done here. One for rendering the refraction texture, not the refraction depth texture and the other for displaying the reflection texture. And just give them some reasonable positions and scales on the screen so that you can actually see them. And don't forget to add them to the list of GUIs as well so that they actually get rendered. Then in the while loop, you'll need to render the scene three times, once to the reflection frame buffer, once to the refraction frame buffer, and then finally to the screen, to the default frame buffer, which we do by first unbinding any frame buffer object. So if you run that now, you should have something like this with the refraction texture, the reflection texture, and then the actual scene in the background. At the moment, I'm just using the same clipping plane for all of these render passes, uh, but now we need to actually choose the correct clipping planes for each render pass. So for rendering the reflection texture, we want to render everything above the water's surface. So we need a horizontal plane pointing upwards, uh, so the normal would be 0, 1, 0, and then the distance from the origin is just the height of the plane, which is the height of the water tile, which we can get by doing water.getHeight. 
and we have to make this negative here um, because of mathematical reasons. Links are in the description if you want to find out more. Then for the refraction pass we want to render everything under the water so the normal of this plane is going to be pointing downwards and the distance from the origin is water.getHeight. Then for the final render pass we just want to render the whole scene to the screen without clipping anything. So ideally we would just call GL disable and then we would disable the GL clip distance zero before rendering the scene. Um, but unfortunately some drivers simply ignore this command and have all of the clip distances enabled the whole time. So you could try running this and it may or may not work for you but for me unfortunately it still clips some of the geometry. So unfortunately I have to do something really hacky and I just have to set this clip plane to something really really high up uh, so that nothing will ever be clipped by it. But this should all now work perfectly and if I go ahead and run that we've got the reflection texture rendering everything above the water, we've got the refraction texture rendering everything below the water and we've got the whole scene being rendered onto the screen in the background. The final thing that we have to do now is to correctly position the camera before rendering the reflection texture. To create the illusion of the scene being reflected in the water's surface we have to move the camera under the water before rendering the reflection texture. The camera needs to be moved down by its original distance above the water multiplied by 2 and the pitch of the camera also needs to be inverted. So let's do this in the code now. So before we render the reflection texture we first need to calculate the distance that we want to move the camera down and as I said that's 2 times the camera's height above the water so that's the camera's position, camera's y position minus the water's y position and then we're going to actually move the camera down by that distance so camera.getPosition.y minus equals distance and then we're going to invert the pitch of the camera and I've actually created a method in the camera class to do that it's a very simple method there so just add that in and then we render the scene to the reflection texture and then after that we need to move the camera back to its original pitch position so uh, we get the position and we're going to move it back up by the distance that we moved it down so plus equals distance this time and we're going to invert the pitch again so that it's back to its original uh, orientation. So let's run that now and there you go it's all working nicely and you can already kind of see how the reflection texture looks kind of like a reflection of the scene here. So we now have everything we need to start creating the water effect and that's what we're going to be doing next time. So for basically the rest of this series we're now just going to be working on the water shader code to create a realistic looking water effect. For this week though that is it. Next time we're going to be putting these two textures onto the water's surface and it will start to look a lot like actual water. If you haven't seen yesterday's devlog video yet then do give that a watch, there's a link to that on the screen now and this week I was working on some visual effects. You can keep in touch with me via any of my social media pages, links are in the description below but yeah thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a lovely week and I will see you all next time.